I have made one Jellyfin video, but it's a little bit long, and I spent a lot of time comparing it to Plex. In this video, we're just going to get it installed. It's the simple video that you should share with others who are just coming over to Jellyfin. And I'm also going to assume that you've decided that Jellyfin is the best. It's essentially NB, except open source, and I think it's better than Plex, but I covered that in the other video. So let's just get it installed. I'll show you how to do the plugins and stuff, and I'll also show you how to add some users and get your entire library set up in the best most simple way possible. But first, I want to give a shout out to Asus Store because I'm now using the Asus Store AS674T. This is the locker store for Gen 2. 31% better performance than the last generation. And I love the fact that we have two 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports. It makes running everything in my local network a lot faster because I have 2.5 gigabit ethernet on my computer. You just get more for your money in this small package. I was actually having some permissions issues with my other NAS, but now that it's on the Asus Tor, everything's been rock solid and it's been a very smooth performance. You can use M.2 in here for caching. Uh, and this was also the easiest NAS that I've ever set up in my entire life. Just use these buttons on the outside of the device to get everything set up. And I didn't even need to go into any fancy menus. It did everything just the way I want it, just by pressing these buttons. Also, I want to note that this NAS is extremely efficient it uses under 40 watts when I'm using all four hard drives and you know moving files back and forth that's less than my laptop uses so I much prefer using this if you're talking about an always on device when you compare it to like a desktop computer or even a laptop computer so if you're ready to upgrade to a better storage solution I recommend that you check out my videos they're in the description also I'll talk about why I use the Seagate Iron Wolf Pro drives all that stuff is in the description now let's succinctly go through Jellyfin Before I install anything, I always like to set up my files and organize all of my different folders. So head over to this link I'm gonna provide in the description, it's on jellyfin.org. It'll tell you the naming scheme for all of the different file types, like movies and such. For like shows, you need to create a folder that's the title of the series, and then this. So I'm gonna be using some anime, and uh, you know, the new stuff, I've been titling it correctly. It does a pretty good job of finding things, even if things are not titled correctly. But just know that the best way to title things is the name, and then in parentheses, the year. It'll usually find them anyway, but it's nice to have things named correctly. So you're gonna need to get Jellyfin Server installed. And you can do that on Windows by going here to jellyfin.org and, and downloading it. I'm not gonna use the Windows version because it actually doesn't function as well as it does on the Asus Tor Locker Store. So I'm gonna install it right here. Open up your NAS from inside your browser and then click on App Central or the equivalent in, you know, if you're using a different NAS and just type Jellyfin. Now we're just gonna click Install. It may pop up and say, hey, you need to install Docker. I already have that installed and you need to install FFmpeg. It should pop up and say you need to install a few different things. Just click yes on all of that and then hit install. It's that easy. This may take a few minutes, but not long enough to get a cup of coffee, I wouldn't think. But you can do it anyway. Once you get it installed, you can easily access that just by going to your IP address, and then you'll need a port. So I'll show you how to do that. Just open up a new tab, put in the IP address, the same one you use for your NAS, and then a colon, and then it's 8096 is the default port. It'll tell you, hey, secure connection failed if you have HTTPS. So just get rid of the HTTPS for now and go straight to the IP address and give it a second. It'll load right up and then we'll go through our installation guide. So select your language. All right, this can be any username and any password. Now we're here, we can set up media libraries. But you know, before I set up the media libraries, I'm gonna do something first. I'm gonna continue going through this and then we'll set up the media libraries afterwards. This is just for your metadata settings. You can select anything you like. I'm not gonna do remote access, but if you wanna access this from outside of your house using your public IP through the internet, you'll want to have this check marked. That's a bigger video. We might do another one in the future. All right, let's go ahead and log into our server now. There, nothing here. Would you like to create any libraries? No, I actually do not wanna create libraries just yet. Why is that? I want to install plugins before I actually do any libraries. So if you just click over here on the top on the little hamburger menu and then click on dashboard. Do not get confused. Dashboard and settings are two different things. Dashboard is under administrator and settings are just your user settings here. So click on dashboard. And now we are behind the scenes. It's telling me what's going on here. Scroll down and you're gonna see plugins. It comes with a few that are already here and a few different things so you can pull some metadata, but I want more metadata. 
Now we can install a few simple ones here, and then we can install even more with a few tips I'll show you. You can scroll through and install whatever you like. I'm going to recommend a few metadata plugins so that you can pull all the information from the internet and also open subtitles. So click on open subtitles. All of these take a few seconds. It's because it's taken a long time to connect to their server. All right, there we go. Select the version to install. There we are, just hit install. I'll make a list of the ones I recommend. If you're doing anime, I recommend the AnaDB and any of these other anime plugins. You can install multiple and then allow it to pick from your favorite. I'm just going to do AnaDB. Note that it is totally okay to install multiple of these. Fanart.tv has some very good artwork alternatives. And then the last one I want to mention is the TVDB. It doesn't sound like much, but the TV database has a lot of information for anime as well. Really good episode information. And the last one, if you're going to be using this for music and you have video game music, you can get uh, VGM DB, that's for video game music. And if you want to allow Jellyfin to organize your media libraries, you can also install Auto Organize. I usually just do it myself, but this is up to you. Some of these plugins need additional attention. Like if you click on Open Subtitles, you need to put in your username and password, and your API key is optional. What you need to do is just click here and register for an account over at Open Subtitles. Once you have an account here, you just come back and put your username and password in here. and you want to see even more, like you want some stuff that's not here, well, you can get access to many more plugins. And there's a list of plugins right here that's on uh, Reddit. I'll put this link in the description. It goes beyond the scope of this video, but all you have to do is come over and click repositories and then add more repositories. Now you can go over here to this link on Reddit and see all the different plugins that are available at each one of these different repositories. And you're like, okay, I really want these plugins. So you just grab this repository here, come back over to your, your plugin, and you might want to make sure you remember the name here. This is showing you how to do this one time. And then when you come back to catalog, it'll pull all the plugins from both Jellyfin and that external repository. And you can add all those repositories and have lots and lots of plugins. But this is really all I need, just the ones that come with Jellyfin. So go back over to your NAS and then just turn it on and off really quickly. Just off. Give it a second and turn it back on. And that'll initialize all those plugins so that we can use them. You need to have your media in folders organized the way you want to scan it. Have your movies in a separate folder, have your shows in a separate folder. I separate my anime and my anime movies and my regular movies and my regular shows. So I'm just gonna add my anime stuff. When you click on add media library, it's gonna ask you for the content type. And this is very important. If you pick movies and you put shows in that folder, the metadata is gonna be all messed up. It's not gonna pull all the correct metadata and you won't have the thumbnails. And we'll call this anime movies. Now we need to select the folder where we have all these stored on our NAS. And this is gonna be wherever you've put it on your NAS. I have a media folder and then an anime folder and then a movies folder. There they all are. If you wanna fill in the server information down here, you're welcome to, but it's not necessary most of the time. Now the reason we installed all the plugins first is if you scroll down, you'll see we have different metadata downloaders for the movies. And we can arrange this however we like. So I actually like to put AnaDB and Analyst on top. Let's put AnaDB on top, I don't know. Either one of those will work just fine. And then down here, we can arrange it. I like the fan art stuff, so I'm gonna put that up here. There we go, AnaDB. And then if you scroll down even more, you can say save artwork into media folders if you want. And this will just, as it downloads the different covers and stuff, it'll put those into the folder. That's up to you. Otherwise, it's gonna be just attached to the database. Now we have something called subtitle downloads. So scroll down and pick your language, and this will actually attempt to download subtitles from open subtitles. This, if you have your video files titled the way I showed you, it probably won't download. So you can uncheck that, and it'll try to download stuff based upon what the, what the actual content is. Sometimes it won't work perfectly, but you can always search for more subtitles after. And I also like to do skip if the video file already contains embedded subtitles, because there's no reason to download extra subtitles. Okay, now let's do anime shows. Make sure you pick shows, and then I'll just title this anime shows. And this works with regular shows as well. Found my media share, anime, and then shows. There they all are. Now remember I said the TVDB is actually really good. I'll move that to the top just to show you that it's really good. But the rest of the stuff I'll leave just like this. Metadata downloaders for the seasons. Okay, that's fine. I'm gonna put the TVDB on top again. And when it comes to the image fetchers, I like fan art, but it's up to you. Image fetchers are for the season. Let's do fan art again. Actually, I'll just leave it on AnaDB. It's fine. And now these two folders are gonna start filling up and we'll be able to watch some, some media soon. 
and we're going to need to give this a few minutes just to scan our, our libraries. It's taken a while. This The movies is already scanned, but you can see it's, it's going to be slowly pulling in information. Do not panic if you see a bunch of stuff that looks like this. You're going to need to just leave this alone and come back later um, because it is, it is looking for all of this metadata. And it might take a little while if you have a big collection, like an hour or so. Head back over to Jellyfin and then click on Downloads. And we're going to get a client so that we don't have to use the web browser as our as our viewing source. And that'll also give us access to full surround sound because you only get stereo from most browsers. Some give you surround sound, but most browsers are just stereo. When you click on Downloads, what we want is the Jellyfin Media Player. Go to GitHub Downloads. And you want to grab the one that fits your computer. If you're using Linux, up there it is. We've got Windows 64, so click on that. And once it's finished, we can install it. All right, when it first opens up, it's going to ask for your server IP. So just put that in again. And remember, it is 8096 unless you have changed it, which you can do. And now we are using the application to browse it. So that's how I'm going to continue. But what I'm going to actually do is leave and come back later. And then we can take a better look at this. So. All right, so we've been letting this run for a while, and it's got most of the stuff. Like if you click on anime movies, you can see it's pulled most of the data. Let's say it's not grabbing something correctly or it's getting the wrong information or the wrong artwork. We can fix that. Now, a lot of this is still pulling, so I'm doing this a bit prematurely, but you can follow along here. There's a little dot, dot, dot. Click on that and then go down to identify. And this is the Slayers OVA called Book of Spells from 1996. So I'm going to type the Slayers. The Slayers works just fine. And then Book of Spells. To help the search, I'll put the year in. And this can take 20, 30 seconds sometimes to look at all the databases online. If you know the IMDB information, like the ID and stuff, you can put that in here to make it even easier. All right, see, so we've got it here on the TV database and on Analyst. I'm gonna grab it from the TV database and say replace all existing images. Even if it doesn't get the images from the TV database, it'll usually identify things on multiple different metadata sources and allow you to pull images from all of them. So again, this can take 20 or 30 seconds. Just wait, don't mess with it. Sometimes it doesn't immediately update here, but if you just go ahead and click on it, and then go inside, you'll see, hey, look at updated. And it pulled all the information. If you want to get a different screenshot, well, over here, there's another dot, dot, dot. Click on that and click on edit images. And then from here, we can click on search for images. There's also the backdrops. Click on search and look, it's pulling information from the analyst and the movie database. So you can pick the one that you think is the best. And if you don't like any of them, you can upload your own just by clicking on the plus button right here dragging and dropping it, or you can browse on your computer and upload the image yourself. If you add a bunch of new files and nothing's being found, well, you can just click here and then refresh metadata. And the easiest thing to do is tell it to scan for new and updated files. Just hit refresh and it'll look through the folder and see if anything's new and then it'll start to show up. And you can do that on whatever library you have. If you wanna do it for movies or whatever, or for your shows. All right, now let's say you want to rearrange how this looks in the front. You want to put different things in different places. Well, we can do that easily enough by clicking here and then clicking on user settings. And then we can click on home. And then we can say what's going to be section number one. I just want that to be, um, yeah, my media is fine. I want my media on top. And then continue watching is kind of like on Netflix. If you watch something halfway through, it'll show you, hey, what's next? Continue listening is for music. I don't need that right now. So let's just do latest media. And you can set this up however you like. And then you can set up your library order. I want shows on top and then movies after. Hit save, and then that'll rearrange how my home is laid out. There's my latest shows, latest movies, next up, all that stuff. Put anime shows right here in the front. If I want to you know, get a picture for this, if it doesn't automatically find a picture, I can click on this, click on edit images, and then add an image. And we can just, you know, put whatever image we like there, one of our own images. And so I just grab this shot from the Slayers right there. That's pretty. And that's going to be my primary. So just, yep, upload. There we go. Good. Go back. We'll need to refresh this page before it shows up. So just click somewhere else, click on anime movies, then click home again. And there it is. Now we have, you know, an image for that. If you want to do the same for movies, you can do that. You can get really nerdy with this. Here in the dashboard, we have something called users. Now you can add additional users edit them, give each one an avatar. And then the cool thing about the different users, if I want to add another user called Bob, how about it, and give Bob a password. And the cool thing about this is now we can give Bob only access to one or more libraries. So I say Bob is only allowed to see anime shows. And then we can say, okay, Bob is allowed to do this, 
He can stream. And is he allowed to delete media? No, Bob is not allowed to delete media. So you can set up different user accounts. If you have kids, you can set up a folder just for them, for all the kids shows and stuff. Give them access to that. Don't let them delete it. Then click save and allow them to log in on their own from their devices or just from the TV and stuff. I actually have a separate account just for my exercise equipment. And that way, when I go to exercise, my latest shows and you know like whatever's up next is different than if I'm on my couch or at my computer. So I recommend having different users for different use cases. So before you go into the show, you have to do subtitles here. It's not like Plex where you can do the subtitles while you're watching the show. Please give us that feature, Jellyfin. But right here, what you'll do is just find the episode that you need the subtitles for, click on the dot dot dot, and then click on edit subtitles, and then pick your language. There's Esperanto, okay, English, and then just do a search. No results found because I haven't put in my information for um, open subtitle. But as long as you have your open subtitles information, it will use your account to search. All right, if you're using Windows and you want to install plugins, you generally have to install them manually. Some of them you don't, but most of them I believe you do. Uh, and that goes beyond the scope of this video, but all the information for that is going to be in the description. So if you want to install this on Windows, you can totally do that. Thanks for watching till the end. I want to mention the website that I recently set up. This is easymode.im, and this is not for making money. This is a hangout place for people who are into anime and video games, and just nerd culture in general. It's way less toxic than Twitter. And it's not Mastodon. It's better than Mastodon, but it's compatible. So if you're curious about that, well, this might be a good place to jump in, meet some cool people. You can follow anyone on Mastodon. As you can see here, I've followed a bunch of people and their stuff is all showing up in my timeline. But we also have a local timeline and this is just people who are members here on easymode.im. You can find out what's going on, chit chat with people, uh, maybe meet some cool people. And then if you scroll down, we have some functionality that's very similar to like a forum. Also, if you click here on more, you'll see that we have some other stuff like channels. Channels are kind of like forum categories. You can see I've set up a few here, but you can give me ideas for other ones that you would like. So if you want to just come on to easymode.im and talk to our members about tabletop gaming, you can do it right there. If you want to if you want to set up a game night to play with people, do it. You want to talk about retro gaming, do that. And this will get better and better as we grow. So if you're looking for a community that's not toxic and is full of really cool people, head over to easymode.im and I'll see you there. Bye everybody. You've seen Vampire Hunter D, but have you seen Elderly Person Z? This summer, Haruku takes care of Elderly Takazawa in a cyberpunk gripping epic that's riveting, moving, and other words that are big.